This is the full in-depth review of the brand new Ping G700 irons. Ping claim these are forgiving, they are long, they feature hollow construction, so it's almost like a driver face as you're hitting the shot. A C300 steel face increasing ball speed and forgiving sole allows for better turf interaction. I've actually got the five, the seven, the nine and the utility wedge, so the gap wedge to test on GC quad. Also getting out on the golf course to give you my full findings, my full information around these products, what I've thought was good and what I thought wasn't so good. I'm also gonna answer some of your questions and I'm gonna give you a final conclusion of the new Ping G700 irons. The Ping G700 irons. Now this really is quite a new step forward for Ping irons. They've never made a hollow construction head before. This is their first of the kind. And they've aimed it at this forgiving market to hit the ball further and to make the game easier. That's what they're claiming. And the way that they've talked about it is with the hollow head design that can make the face faster, a little bit like a driver to get maximum distance. I wanna see if that is the case. Now, looks wise, they look pretty sleek. They have this kind of pearlescence finish. They've got really nice detailing. It is a chunky iron and it's got a relatively large amount of offset. But apart from that, it does look very good behind the ball. And on the shelf, it looks actually fantastic. I love the little shiny features around the number and the ping sign. And just a, a kind of blown up version of like the eye blade or the i200 iron. The lofts are strong. Let me, let me get that out there. The lofts are very strong. So the 7 iron here, this is for ping and this is standard spec. And you can't even go power spec. But the standard set loft for the 7 iron is 29.5 degrees. The 5 iron is 23 degrees. The 9 iron I've got is 39 degrees. And the U wedge is 49 degrees. And I've tested all of these clubs on GC Quad to give you some of the findings. Let's dive through those numbers. And we'll start with the 7 iron first. So the carry distance I was getting through the Ping 7 iron was 181 yards of carry distance. And I'll be honest, I absolutely loved hitting this club. Some shots to know on the 7 iron, shot two, I hit this from the heel, but it still went really well. Shot number four, I felt it felt awful, but it went stone dead next to the flag, even though it ran up and got close. And I shot number five, I absolutely crushed it. Some of the shots I hit with the seven iron were really, really impressive. I think I literally only missed one shot to the left with the seven. I thought the flight was good. When I looked at the data, the spin was far too low. Probably one of the lowest seven iron spins I've ever seen about four and a half thousand rpm which is super low but what it lacked in spin it gained a little bit in height and descent angle so the height for the third for the seven iron was 31 yards up in the air and the descent was coming down at 44 degrees so only on course testing is going to tell us whether this club would actually stop on the green the five iron that I hit was 205 yards of carry and like as i mentioned the five iron loft is 23 degrees um, and it showed signs of bad shots. Shot number four was a low heel shot, which actually still finished incredibly good. And on GC Quad, it measured it as, as a good shot. It still came up pin high on the green and not really punished me at all, which was great to see. So with 205 yards carry for the five iron, my only big concern for that was the low spin rate. Even though I found that forgiveness level was great, the spin rate was coming out a little bit low. And if I'm honest, the peak height and the descent angle wasn't wowing me thinking that club was ever going to stop with a five iron from the way I was hitting the shots. I was hitting some nine irons as well. Um, hit some nine irons really well. The nine iron loft is 39 degrees and I was getting 154 carry distance. But for a nine iron, one of the lowest spin rates I have ever seen. These clubs have super low spin and not in a good way. From what I see in uh, testing, they seem to just have no level of spin at all. And I, I concern how they're gonna stop on the green unless they're gonna go sky high to the, to the moon and back, which I was seeing little signs of. So the peak height with the nine iron was 35 y yards in the air and the descent angle was coming down at 50 degrees. That's its only chance of stopping on the green because the spin numbers just weren't allowing these clubs to stop on the green from what I've experienced with spin numbers in the past. But even with the nine iron shot one, I hit low heel again and it went pin high. So forgiveness is just out of this world, really was. And I hit so many good shots with the uh, G700 irons. Moving into the U wedge, which is a kind of 49 degree, effectively a gap wedge. I was hitting some good shots with the U wedge, had no problems with that at all. 125 yards of carry, which is good for that loft. And eight and a half thousand spin, which again, across the board is pretty much on the low side. So I was in two minds. If I just took out the spin column, 
just out of this test, this whole test, I love these clubs. I love the performance. I love the flight, the loud, but not an offensive, uh, disgusting noise. They're actually quite a crushed noise with the loud sound. Um, they shouldn't suit me because they're massively offset. But what I did like about the fact of, even though they're offset, from the toe shot, because there was so much chunk behind the toe, I didn't feel like I could hit the shots to the left. So like so many positives, but so many mixed thoughts. But the thing that kept pulling me down and the, and the thing that kept pulling the golf ball down was this spin. There was just no spin on the golf shots at all. So I needed to take them out on the golf course. I needed to test them because these are expensive golf clubs. These are, you know, 1,000 pounds or $1,100 for a set of seven irons. They've got to perform out on the golf course as well. And that's exactly where we went next when I put them in the bag to do some testing. So out on the golf course, I played at West Lanks and I played a loop of a few holes with these clubs. Uh, on the this particular tee shot, I hit two five irons. I hit the first one great. I hit the second one a little bit healy. The second one worked out better in the fairway and I was in the prime location. The one that I crushed actually finished in the rough just on the left, but wasn't in a massive amount of trouble. I then actually hit some U wedges, some utility wedges from the middle of the fairway here. And I just wanted to see how they would stop. Man, was I surprised about the shots. And I really mean this. I hit a couple of shots into that green that literally stopped and spam back. And I did not expect to see that. The only way that they would stop, in my opinion, was because of the height. To actually get the club, the ball coming back was a huge shock to me when I was hitting in with the U wedges there on that particular hole. The next time I hit some seven irons from the middle of the fairway, hit some really nice flighted shots. I tried to draw some, I could do it. I tried to fade some. I found that a little bit tricky just from the shape of the head, but that's only my personal opinion on those ones. And then I also hit some shots into a green with the seven iron to see what the spin looked like. Um, again, it shocked me. Truth be told, it shocked me. I didn't expect them to stop and they, they stopped. You know, it's, it just goes to show that sometimes the spin number doesn't always equate to how the ball will stop on the green. It's very dependent on the golfer. It really is. I, I can strike the ball well enough to generate spin. I can strike the ball well enough to get the height with the speed. I can get the ball to stop. My fear is for the guy who maybe swings the, the club a little bit slower, who maybe can't get that spin and can't get that height. How does the ball stop on the green for that particular golfer? That would be a concern for me when putting it in human testing and putting it in the hands of the general golfer because these clubs aren't aimed for me. These clubs are aimed for higher handicappers. These clubs are aimed for game improvement. And that's where I see there might be a little bit of an issue in some of the clubs that people test with these clubs. But the one thing I did want to notice as well and wanted to pull up was I had these clubs in the bag and these are brand new. You know, these came in a wrapper, perfect when I got them. And there are signs of quite bad damage around the neck and the bottom of the golf club, just from kind of the clubs being in the bag. The, the kind of pearl finish kind of scratched a bit. And, and that's a real shame because again, for a club that you're paying this much money for, you do not want them to scratch. And if I'm honest, the seven iron looks like it's an ex-demo set that's been hit a thousand times. And that's a real shame because I would hate for a club to look battered when it's almost brand new. Let's answer some of your questions and then we'll get to the conclusion of the Ping G700 irons. Okay, so you, some of your questions coming in, and this is really uh, an interesting one because as soon as I posted the picture of these and put the video on the first look, first hit, the biggest thing that was coming out of these was they look like PHG irons, and they do, and they look like the new tailor-made irons, the P790, and they do. The thing is, these hollow head constructions are a hot property at the moment. They're performing well. But unlike the PHG and unlike the tailor-made, this is hollow, completely hollow. The PHG has the kind of... in. in urethane in, inside it that helps with performance and the, as we all know the tailor-made has a speed foam this doesn't have anything but what was interesting you can actually wrench the screw out at the end i actually did it as a close-up you can completely pull that screw out so whether there's going to be option down the line to add stuff i'm not sure whether fitters could add stuff i'm not sure do they feel as good as phg and tailor-made um i would say no but I would say these are geared at a different golfer. I, I feel like PHG, certainly the good quality ones, um, the 0311Ts and the TaylorMade P790s, they're aimed more at your better player. And therefore, they have the response of a better player's iron. They feel slightly softer. They're forged and they just look classic and they, they're really good. They're slimmer. They're not as big and chunky as offset as these. 
This is not the market that Ping are going for with these. They're going for the higher handicapper. So they're not going to feel quite as good because that's not a priority. The priority is to make these clubs as forgiving as possible. And sometimes with that, you lose the level of feel to a degree. So they are very similar to PXG and they are very similar to P790 in the view. But performance, I would think these are totally different. And I would put these into a way more forgiving category, way more forgiving category than the other two clubs we've just talked about. Let's go on to a conclusion about the Ping G700 irons. Okay, so the conclusion of the Ping G700 irons. The question I'd always ask, are they gonna go in the bag? And if honestly, honestly, if you started this, this review and said, are they gonna go in the bag? I'd say no chance, are they heck? The performance and the hits, just take the spin number out for a minute. I don't think I've ever hit as many greens in testing on GC Quad as I did with the Ping G700. And I mean that. I hit green after green after green. I think there's almost 20 shots in a row where I hit the green, which is not common for me. On the golf course, they performed great. You know, I didn't have any massive issue with them. They did what they said they needed to do. The thing that would put me off personally is I don't massively like the shape behind the ball. It's a little bit too offset for me, a little bit too chunky. And the feel isn't that mm, butter soft. It's a little bit harder in the cast metal. But that doesn't mean that I wouldn't use them. It's just that maybe they're just slight. Even though the positives are great, the negatives are stacking up as well on the other side of the spectrum. And for me, to put a club in the bag, there's got to be 98% positive feedback from the product. And the look and the feel just didn't quite hit the box for me. But that doesn't mean it won't do for you watching this video because I honestly think these could be one of the best ping irons I've ever made. And that, that's crazy that because these are so far removed from what ping normally do. They are so far removed. And in my opinion, these are replacing like the G Max, which were mega popular, but they're a good better looking set than G-Max. They sound better, they perform better. They're long, they're low spin, but take that out for a minute, they, they kind of work really nicely. I'm a little bit concerned about the scratching, definitely, and that might have just been because I was a bit rough and tumble with them, but there's gonna be a lot of golfers that spend a thousand pounds that will either put covers on them and they'll protect them, but there'll also be a lot of golfers that spend a thousand pounds, you know, $1,100, and they will do like I do, just chuck them in the back of the car or chuck them in the, in the uh, in the bag and they'll scratch and dent and that's a real issue moving forward with these irons and i'm not sure it's that's just the finish it happens or whether there is something different with these irons because i didn't see that with other ping irons in the past with this finish they're very good they are very good and i think they're going to fit a lot of different category of players i would still see them geared around the higher handicapper maybe moving into kind of the middle handicapper. I just can't see the lower handicapper moving the, into these clubs. I just think there'll be a few too many negatives stacked up for them. But that's not saying they're not a good club. They really are. Thanks for watching, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, give it a big thumbs up. Comment below what do you think of the Ping G700 irons. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Also, if you're new to my channel, it's free to do so. So subscribe and you click the red button and then you're connected to my content all the time. You don't miss a video. Thanks for watching, guys. Stay tuned. Lots more to come. And that was my full in-depth review of the Ping G700 irons. If they were just a little bit slimmer, I could say that about myself, to be fair. <laughs>